Carfco's AI text to relief instantly transforms simple text into detailed 3D reliefs with no extra modeling steps. Today, we are going to be using one of my subscribers' prompts to get a good look at how this tool works firsthand. In this video, I will be running the tool from prompt to toolpath and then showing you the results as I carve the new relief using my Onefinity Journeyman CNC. Let's get right into it. What we're gonna need to do is decide which way we're gonna go with this image to relief or text to relief. Image to relief, you're gonna be able to drop pictures, photographs, JPEGs, PNGs, stuff like that in there, and then it's gonna create a relief for you. Today, we're gonna be using text to relief. So I'll go ahead and click on generate with text. Our prompt today is waving American flag and spread eagle wings with detailed feathers. You see here, I have 82 credits left on my account, which means that I can generate 82 more images because they cost one each. Pretty much a token coin based system. I'm not a big fan, but let's see how the tool works. Click on generate. So we're just gonna click on that and it's gonna produce four images for us to choose from depending on what it is that we want to do here. You got a selection here, uh, some things you need to keep in mind when you're selecting this, you know, what kind of wood are you carving on? For this project specifically, I have a piece of maple that this is going to go directly on. This one here could do it. If you're not satisfied with the way these images turned out, you have the option to generate it again. I like this one here, but I wanna capture more of the eagle. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate another four images. Luckily for us, the last coin images are gonna stay right here. So in case we decided we wanted to go back to that, we could do that if we wanted to. So here comes my next four. So I think this one here on the right looks pretty good, but I would be concerned about the 3D relief actually being able to generate the stars. I really don't think that you're gonna be able to capture that. Um, I could be wrong, but by the time it's carved out, I don't think you're gonna have enough detail to see those stars out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the one that I had first. We're gonna go with this one, click on generate relief. Now keep in mind that when you do this, it's gonna cost another five tokens. It's one token to generate the images, one to actually produce an STL with, you're actually gonna need five tokens to generate that. We'll go ahead and click on that. So this is the next step. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of depth going on here. So we have three sliders, depth, detail, and zero plane. First one we're gonna mess with is depth. I'm gonna bring that down quite a bit just to make sure I have enough wood to carve this out on. Honestly, right off the bat, that's looking really good. You see the stars, the stars are showing up in the background of the eagle and the eagle is coming out very nicely. The only thing that's kind of weird is the claw right here. I think that if anybody looked closely enough, even at a wood carving, they would be able to tell that this was AI generated, but nonetheless, still pretty cool. So for detail, you can see as I move the slider up and down, it provides another level of definition depending on where I'm gonna want it at. So in this case, I'm gonna go right about here. I think that's a nice healthy level. And then zero plane, this is gonna be how much of the model we actually carve. So as you can see, the higher I move this up, the more that flag goes away. I want the entire American flag. My zero plane is gonna remain all the way at the bottom. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up in a new model. What I'm actually gonna do here, I'm going to export this as an STL in a flat with a flat plane. So we're gonna go into relief, export, create triangle mesh. And then I'm gonna select close with a flat plane, click on create. There we go, and then I'm gonna save it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new model with my dimensions in it. The piece of maple that I have is 15.125, and the height is 10.25. This is my actual piece of wood that I'm going to carve this on, and now I'm going to import the STL that we just saved as a 3D model. Go ahead and center, adjust X to 10. I need more space on the Y. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this down two more inches. Gonna make the X size eight inches. Out down, close that out. And now I'm actually gonna draw a relief boundary. Go into vector, create relief boundary and then create boundary. That'll give me a square right here around the relief. All right, so I have a nice square here. What I'm gonna do, offset tool, outwards right and my frame, I want it one inch thick, click on offset. So I'm gonna select that one and this one, and then I'm gonna to come to the shape editor tool and we're gonna choose the square plane. We're gonna limit to height. The height will be a 0 0.25, which is a little bit higher than the relief itself, but you can see that's gonna frame it in nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and use the texture tool, texture relief tool up here, and we're gonna use selected vector. I'm actually gonna go into the relief clip art library and use the dragon scale two, do one inch scales. So I'm gonna resize this even a little bit smaller to make sure that it's not bigger than our eagle wings. We don't wanna take away from the object in the center. Um, that should look pretty, pretty clever. Let's see, let's see what it looks like when I apply. Increase the Z height a little bit to make that stand up. Probably increase the size of it, it's a bit small. Control Z that, 
make these half an inch. And then I'd like them to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to turn the wire repeat distance to 85. Just gonna tighten those up. Well, you know what, we'll go 80. That'll tighten them up. Yep, that's what I want right there. And then I want them to overlap so that way they don't look all the same. 25%, that down to 15. I think that'll look pretty good. All right, we'll see how that looks. It's the X repeat distance, that's the problem. So we'll take this down to 50 as well. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. So this looks like a dragon scale frame, and then we'll have the eagle in the middle there. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll send that, that looks good. I like that. All right, so now that all that's left to do is get this carved out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the outside vector. I'm gonna use the um, offset vectors tool again. We're gonna go outwards and right. Very, very small amount. That'll give us enough space for the bit to get in there and clear the rest of the dragon scales. Um, actually, I'm gonna make enough room for the roughing pass, so we're gonna actually do another 0.20 onto that. This is where our clearance is gonna be, because obviously it's gonna be the quarter inch Jenny compression bit that's doing that work. And then I'm just going to carve the entire thing together. So all I really need now is the outside vector. So I'm going to delete all of the other vectors. So I'm gonna go over here, toolpaths tab is create machine relief toolpath. Going to use selected vectors. We want inside the vector, finishing. I always use the 16th inch skinny jenny. And then for roughing, roughing I always use quarter inch jenny compression bit. Skinny jenny is gonna be plunge rates 125. We're gonna run 175 on the feed rate. For the roughing pass, we're gonna run 150 and 100. We're gonna add ramping moves. Thickness of my material is 0 0.64. Go and calculate now. All right, so now I have calculated a roughing pass and a finish pass so we'll go ahead and simulate this make sure it is going to do what we want it to do so here's the roughing pass cool here's the finishing pass man looking at it now these eagle claws right here are looking pretty freaky <laughs> it's going to be interesting when it comes out i'm going to see if anybody notices all right so last but not least we need to make a cutout tool path so we're going to run a profile tool path on the vector that we already selected fill the simulation i think that looks pretty good looks like we're getting a lot of detail out of the stars and the wings uh the carving will tell us let's go back out to our vector here there is a quarter inch away from the actual from the actual carving so what i want to do is bring this back um, to a half that way i can run the quarter inch compression bit along the vector and we get a perfect cutout i'm going to take offset vectors tool again we're going to go inwards left eighth of an inch is perfect for our jenny compression bit to come back in and cut that out i'm going to use this as the profile pass we're going to cut along start depth to zero finish depth to 0.64 which is the width of my, uh, depth of my material i'm going to set this for quarter inch jenny compression bit we're going to add ramping i'm going to be using double-sided tape to secure this workpiece so i don't need to add bridges because it's all going to be stuck down now all that's left to do here is get these saved and then send down to the one fitting and we can start the car using our dust collection system today this is the nighthawk dust boot by solidified designs you can find these on etsy All right, so there's that finished. It came out pretty nice. The stars are very faint, so I'm gonna have to be very careful about how I'm finishing this, but otherwise, frame looks nice and the eagle looks nice. You can see there's a flag behind it. Uh, we'll see if the finishing process can bring all that back out.
Those sanding mops are always very helpful. Pick these up on Amazon. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and run the cutout pass. All right, so this is what we got unfinished. So this is just a 50-50 mix of shellac and denatured alcohol. I use it on pretty much all of my 3D carvings. Everything comes out pretty well when I use this stuff. So I'm just gonna hit it, sand it off, and probably do that three times, and I think it'll look good to go. Okay, so I am not even a little bit happy with how the details are coming out on this. As soon as I put the layer of shellac on there, started filling in the small grooves that were providing all of the detail um, that came off of the card the first time. So I've got it mounted back on the table here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this STL back into V-Carve and I'm going to run a sketch laser tool path so that I can try to bring out some of the definition of this carve. Hopefully it works. All right, now that's looking infinitely better. I'm gonna go ahead and get it sanded up and have one more round of shellac on it. In this video, we started with Carveco AI Texture Relief and we ended with VCarve Laser Sketch. Let me know what you thought about the process and the end result in the comments below. If you like content like this, hit that subscribe button and you can expect to see more videos like this every week on my channel.